we'll see how this goes. Um, I just posted a video about why I pay my daughters a salary. And um, I don't know how familiar any of you are with um, Montessori School or with Waldorf education. Um, the, the thinking behind Montessori School is that part of school should be teaching children how to be self-reliant. That when children have a, a, a feeling of purpose in their life, they're happier and um, better adjusted. Now, Waldorf School takes that kind of a big leap forward and that they say that children need to also be involved in animal husbandry and in food production, not just in a home kind of uh, self-reliance, but in the broader world, understanding where their food comes from and that that interaction with those animals adds to the child's well-being. Now, they're both very expensive. You can get some charter schools that um, do at least the Montessori school, but you're looking, if you're paying for a private Montessori school or a private Waldorf school, it can be like $600 a month. Um, there is a Montessori school up in Bellevue here in Idaho, and they have Angora rabbits. They have gardens. I don't remember if they have cows, but um, a lot of small animals uh, for the children to take care of. And it's considered really hooty duty and uh, kind of, uh, what's the word? kind of snob hill a little bit. So for those of you who don't have the big money, uh, what is it you're really getting out of this Waldorf and this Montessori education? Well, you're just getting usefulness. You're getting chores. And so whether you public school your children, whether you unschool your children, homeschool, private school, and whatever avenue you take for schooling your children, you can still gain that Waldorf experience and that Montessori experience by being engaged with your children and having these opportunities for, for learning in everyday situations, teaching kids how to clean, teaching kids how to cook, um, teaching children how to take care of animals. Um, if you don't have space for, um, for keeping animals, a lot of times there's a community garden and um, kids can, can garden or they can, you know, a lot of times there's farmers that kids can go in and help with chores on a real farm. Um, the, the only thing that's really a requirement, it's not money. The requirement is being a parent that arranges their lives in such a way that until the child has a skill, you're there to monitor. Um, once they have the skill down, you don't need to monitor anymore. They've, they've got it. They understand it. Your presence is not required. Um, but until they have that skill down and they're proficient at it, you have to be there to monitor. And depending on age, depends on, I don't know, there are teenagers who don't know how to do their own laundry. That might be a good place to start. First, you want self-reliance and self-sufficiency in the things that allow them in their everyday life to function, which would be things like having a clean room, uh, doing your own laundry, cooking. And then once you have those basic things down, <coughs> you can move on to more complicated things. But I mean, imagine a, a teenager who was raised from a two-year-old that already knows how to clean everything um, and already knows how to take orders in a, in a respectful way. Well, when you get to the point where you're teaching them how to drive a car, you already have that communication open because every, every day of their lives, there has been communication. What is required? Um, I have finished this task. Uh, here, if, if you choose to go this way, here is your salary. I, I do pay my children a salary. Um, Joel Salatin, if you know Joel Salatin, he is a farmer. I think he's in Virginia. Um, and he raised his children to have jobs on the farm, jobs where they took care of their animals and then they were respond they, their father helped with them with a little bit of seed money, if I remember correctly, but then they were required to pay that loan back. To their dad once they started to make money from their business and the the kids are now entrepreneurs I mean they 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 don't have to work off the farm because the farm pays for itself but they have their own little niche where they made their own money and um, so you might want to look at that um, Joel Salatin I think it was family based farming 
and I have the book and I really like the book and he really stresses that in his book that when children are young they still need to be paid um, that's what it's like in the real world my husband gets paid to go to work now I might not get paid to do what I do but I am in charge of some of the finances of our home and so the things that I think are important I do have money for and the same goes for my daughter if she is contributing to our family she should she should get some of the blowbacks from that. She should she should get paid because she is lightening my load. And by lightening my load, she's lightening her dad's load. She is a contributing member of our family, and she's important. And thus, we are going to pay her. And if, she, if it was menial work, like tiny things, and she wasn't doing it well, I would not pay her. I do not pay her until she is proficient, and she can do it by herself. And she does it quickly the first time. If, if it takes coaxing and it takes um, uh, that kind of thing, then she doesn't get paid for it. She has to actually be proficient and be a good employee. And um, I, I make it really clear when we go out and go shopping and we say, see how because you did your chores, you have this money you can spend and you can buy what you want to and you don't have to ask mom for money because you have money of your own. And I make a really big deal of it. She counts her money out at the counter. Um, she gets to tell people what she did to make that money. And she feels like an adult because she acts like an adult. So um, I thought that would be a good um, explanation for the rest of, of uh, that video that I just did. So.